very warm evening welcome from Te Whanganui Atara Wellington in Aotearoa, New Zealand to all of you across the world down here in the Southern Hemisphere as well as also you in the Northern Hemisphere um, who are participating in the session today. Um, the focus of today's session is going to be the new version of Mahara 2104, which the Mahara team at Catalyst re released on the 30th of April just this year. And so what I'm going to do is uh, take you through a number of the new features that we were able to include in this release uh, so that you get a better idea of what you can do with Mahara 2104. And um, kind of the tagline for this release really is um, using portfolios in an organizational context because we were fortunate enough to implement a number of features that benefit organizations that work with a lot of students or a lot of staff or um, associations or regulators that need to supervise a lot of portfolios where it is even more important than in smaller implementations to have efficiencies to be able to roll out portfolios easily to everybody and also to do reporting. And so that is what I'm going to show you today. Um, but before we get uh, to the actual features, I'd like to give a big thank you to all the organizations that have contributed to this latest release. So besides us at Catalyst who do the release maintenance and also the main feature development um, either for our clients or also um, on behalf of our own interest to further the advancement of Mahara, um, we've had a number of other organizations contribute. And so they are listed here in alphabetical order now, and that is Capital and Coast District Health Board here in Wellington. Uh, Learning Works, which is an IT company up in Hamilton, who support a number of Mahara installations in New Zealand. Uh, Pharmacy Council, also here in New Zealand, who have contributed a lot of the new features um, by make by changing the workflow and also a lot of the usability, which we had wanted to include in Mahara for a very long time and so now had the chance to, to do that via Pharmacy Council. Uh, Switch, uh, who are the um, providers of Switch portfolio in Switzerland, um, are a constant contributor to Mahara with small features, bug fixes, and also very large features. Um, and they are present again also in this release. And so very big thank you to them. Um, ZHAW, um, who uses Switch portfolio and uh, contributed uh, one of the features. And last but not least, not quite in alphabetical order because I grouped the Swiss um, organizations together, is Universität Bremen in Germany, who also contributed a huge feature that um, is going to make a very big difference, especially when it comes to portfolio submissions directly in Mahara, not via a learning management system and um, therefore provides us with a lot of possibilities in order to manage those portfolios. And so that now takes me directly into the demo of the new features. I don't really want to mince any more words, but let's get right into it. And um, instead of showing you feature after feature after feature, what I'm going to do today is kind of take you through a workflow that touches on a lot of the new features, which of course I'm going to point out to you and which you will notice also, um, since you do not yet have them available in your instances of Mahara. And um, so the context for our demo today of these new features really is um, either a company or an organization that works with competency portfolios where 
um, a staff member needs to submit a portfolio for review and then have a reviewer look at that portfolio and make a judgment about that portfolio. And because we are looking at um, kind of organization wide portfolios and a large number of um, people who are creating portfolios, um, I'm going to start with a template. So I've already prepared that a little bit because the creation of a portfolio is very well known to all of you. And so in this case, I created the portfolio template in the institution careers in, in my institution. And um, the portfolio contains a portfolio completion page. So we are, um, um, I also have the smart evidence page in it, but really all we would need is the portfolio completion page um, that had already been implemented in Mahara. But now for Mahara 2104, we've expanded this page quite a lot. So what you can already see now here is that there's these little info icons next to the pages and they display the page description so that you have easy access to them when you look at this page itself. And then what you can also see is an edit button and a more options button on this page. That never existed on Smart Evidence pages before, but now Smart Evidence also has the three dots button, which is essentially our more options button, where you can directly go to the manage access and print this page. And so this, these are some of the usability improvements that we have made. Um, because before you always needed to go into the edit mode and then you could go to manage access or you went to the sharing menu and then give access. But now you can um, get to the manage access screen also when you view the portfolio um, from any portfolio page in order to give that access very quickly. Okay, we'll come back to this page um, just very shortly. Um, then we've got the Smart Evidence page still in here, which I might remove, and then a couple of normal template pages. Um, the, uh, the template page contains instructions, which is also a functionality that already existed in the earlier versions of Mahara. And the text block also has instructions. Um, instructions currently only exist on the text block itself. And also from Mahara 2004 already, there's this quick edit option for text blocks, which makes it possible for you to um, edit a text block when viewing a page. So you don't need to go into the edit mode, which is fantastic, um, especially when you fear that your um, portfolio authors might accidentally delete blocks or move them around and then call you up and want your support. So that is nothing new, um, just kind of briefly showing you what our portfolio template looks like. Now I've been talking about a template and um, what has already been possible in Mahara um, is that you can go into the page settings, into the advanced tab, where you can add the instructions and then also um, change the setting for prevent move removing of blocks so that the delete icon goes away. Um, and also that you can mark a portfolio page as a template. But now let's imagine if you have 10, 15, maybe 20 pages in your portfolio template and you'd have to click that template switch every single time, maybe even the prevent removing of blocks, that takes a lot of time. So what is now possible in Mahara 2104 is that you can go to the collection and the collections edit screen. And have the possibility to select this portfolio as a template which automatically sets the template switch on every single page that already exists in the portfolio, as well as when new pages are added to the portfolio, they will also be marked as templates. 
And another or new option that you have here is the um, current auto-copied template um, option. And that allows it to be automatically copied into new accounts. Um, that feature already existed, but not really this one, because what this feature does is um, automatically remove the auto-copying from any other template that you have in your institution. And um, it also automatically adds the permissions that the portfolio um, shall be made available to everybody in the institution. So that is share with my institution and also that the portfolio is set to allow copying and copy for new institution members. So that functionality can be expanded much more because what is possible then for you is to um, create web services or utilize the existing web services that we have in Mahara now um, that allow you to say, okay, at the um, at the start of the year, when we have a new performance review year or recertification year, um, we want to copy that particular portfolio that is the current auto-copied portfolio into every account um, of the, uh, into all the accounts of people who are supposed to work with that portfolio. So kind of have a reset of the portfolio in order to give that to them automatically rather than them needing to copy it. So it kind of does two things. It copies the portfolio into new accounts, but also into existing accounts um, on particular rules. Those rules cannot yet be set on the administration interface. Um, that is currently a hard-coded option, um, but can certainly be implemented um, on your sites. So now just to show you, what that looks like on a particular portfolio page, if we take a look at one of our template pages. Um, earlier you saw when I was in the settings that both the prevent removing of blocks was set to no, now it is set to yes. And also the template switch is set to yes. And that goes for all the portfolios. Uh, all the pages in that portfolio. And you can also see the template switch is grayed out. That means you cannot remove the template um, and say this page within that portfolio is not a template because it goes for the entire um, portfolio. However, you can still decide uh, to allow the removing of blocks because that is more of a convenience rather than a requirement. Okay, so we have the template, but now we come to one of the very exciting new features um, that you can use on the portfolio completion page. So here you see kind of the sign off and verification block, all things that you might have already explored on your own instance of Mahara. But um, what we haven't had in the past is that you can make a statement as a reviewer on the first page of that portfolio. Um, because you always were only able to make comments on subsequent pages or leave comments on artifacts. And so now we have the possibility of putting one or more review blocks onto this page. So that's a new block. So dragging the block into the page, um, giving it a name. And on this portfolio completion page, you can't really add a lot of blocks. So the portfolio review one is very easy to find. And now it allows you to say, okay, this is actually a primary statement, which means pretty much that it is highlighted and differentiated from any of the other statements you can make on the page. Then you can give it some text. And you can also decide whether you want to have a custom comment um, added to it so that you can write something in your own words. I'll leave that off for the moment for this one. Um, you also have the choice to decide whether the name of the reviewer should be displayed or not. 
Um, so that means that you can use this block for auditing purposes uh, without displaying the name of the auditor. Whereas if you have a named reviewer, then you can show their name. Um, you can make it available to a particular role. And so we created the role of the reviewer, but technically it can also just be anybody who has access to the portfolio. You can set an availability date because sometimes um, reviewers might be reviewing a portfolio a little bit too early. And so with this one, we can prevent that so that, for example, um, if everybody's portfolio starts on the 1st of January, that reviewers can only um, confirm the statement, say, five months later. So you would pick a particular date. It's um, definitely a date rather than a moving date like five weeks, six weeks or 10 weeks after copying. You can also automatically lock the portfolio. Um, so that is similar to submitting a portfolio, only that it's not submitted to a group, but you're not able as portfolio author to make changes to the portfolio. And um, the portfolio author can also receive a notification of when that statement has been confirmed. And you can also decide um, who shall be able to reset it in case a reviewer made the statement too early and um, the portfolio author actually still needs to add something to their portfolio. Okay, so here we've got our statement. And I'll also add a second one so that you can see the difference. So I'll just go through that a little bit faster. Um, So choose again the portfolio review. Um, I don't make a pre-made statement, but just say add a comment. Don't display the name of the reviewer, but they should still have the role of reviewer. So in case of auditing, you could, for example, use a group for that. And um, so that the person doesn't know who from the group members actually left the statement or confirmed the statement um, and therefore you can work um, not display the name. Um, reset statement again. Let's have the site administrator do that and that's it. Okay, so now if you take a look at the portfolio completion page now, it looks quite different. So we, we have the normal stuff that come automatically onto the page and then the primary statement and the reviewer comment. However, because I'm viewing that now as a person who doesn't have the review role on that portfolio, I don't see all that functionality here. So now what I could do is copy that portfolio into other people's accounts automatically or when they join or when you add a CSV file. And that copying of these templates now on kind of from the institution level uh, happens on a cron job so that the site doesn't get text as much as was the case in the past. And so a minute after um, the bulk creation of portfolios was ordered, um, Das Mahara churned through creating those portfolios. Okay, now I'm a portfolio author who needs to use that portfolio, didn't get it automatically copied into their account, and now needs to look for it. Well, typically we would say we have the um, latest changes I can view block here that can tell us, well, which portfolios do I have access to? But as you can see, you don't really see that portfolio in here because that is also a change that we made. Namely, um, because a lot of people have um, commented on the, the fact that students or other learners get irritated when they see that latest changes I can view block because they think, oh my gosh, suddenly everybody has access to my portfolios. And so the change that we've made is that you can now decide which portfolios you want to see in this screen, namely only portfolios shared directly with you, shared with you as a friend, with you as a member of a group or your institution, registered people or public. And the default is always me, friends and my groups. 
And now that I've changed it to also see portfolios from my institution, I can now see the PD collection. And since I'm mem a member of that institution, I can um, preview that portfolio and then copy it into my account. And now this copying um, doesn't ask you about page or collection because I press the copy button from the portfolio completion page, which is not a page that can sit separately on its own. And therefore it just creates the copy automatically. And what we've also done for those um, copies from the institution portfolio is that the name of the portfolio author is immediately added into the collection title because our experience has shown when we work with template and larger organizations um, where a reviewer might see lots and lots of portfolios that of course always have the same title um, that they always ask people to add their name at it. Um, and typically at the front of the portfolio so that the title doesn't get abbreviated. And so we've kind of added that automatically now there. So of course I can still change um, a lot of the other settings um, on this page. So I could remove the portfolio completion page if I wanted to, but in my case, I'll just better leave it. And I can now share my portfolio with another person and give them that new role of reviewer. But before I give them that portfolio, uh, I'm going to take a look at it myself. And as you can see, you don't see the statement and the comment fields anymore. That is deliberate because um, we wanted to avoid that there's information overload. And also, if you were to use those um, comments as uh, for auditing purposes, usually not everybody gets audited. And therefore, you'd see blocks onto the page that might actually never take effect. And that's why for a portfolio author, only filled in blocks will be made visible to them. And now I can, of course, create my portfolio as I'm used to. I can sign off on my portfolio pages if I like. Um, so I just leave that at 33% for the moment. Um, I can also go to the more options button and there see that I can have access to copying again that entire collection um, or, or manage access. And if I go to one of my template pages, um, when I edit them and go into the settings of the page, because this is now a template, I cannot change the instructions, but I can still say I do want to be able to remove blocks and the original template page is linked. So that those three things are already existing functionality, just showing you what it looks like. All right, so I've finished my portfolio and now I'm becoming the third person, namely Praveen, who is my reviewer of the portfolio. And so I'm just going to refresh um, the dashboard page. And here I can see um, Polly Potter's PD collection. And so I see in this case, the portfolio completion page. As reviewer, I can also click template page, see the uh, description of the page, can actually also go to the page, of course, um, and see that they've signed off, but not really done the verification yet. And I see the primary statement, and I can also leave a reviewer comment. And the nice thing about the reviewer comment is you can draft that. Um, and save it if you need to come back later because you haven't looked through all the pages yet and therefore want to give more comprehensive feedback. Now, in this case, I actually went via the latest changes I can view block. However, if I go to share it with me, I can also see that portfolio from Paula, uh, Polly Potter. 
And there's a bit more information available for those portfolios because now we also have the columns for the completion, that is the sign of and verification, and a column for review where I can see can I actually review that portfolio or not. And I have the possibility to remove my own access from a portfolio. So no matter whether you use the um, portfolio completion functionality or not, if the portfolio has been shared with you personally, you can remove your own access. Not with any of the other options, because that would be a bit too complicated um, for the time being. Um, but if the portfolio has been shared just with you personally, and in a way, then you can remove your own access, which you can actually also do when you are on the portfolio itself. So that more options button has become really, really useful because you can remove your access there. Um, yes, you can publish a portfolio, um, Norman, without the completion page. Um, you don't need to use that. So you can still use normal, um, a normal collection and give it a secret URL or make it public. Um, without that page. But if you do have the portfolio completion page um, and you want to publish the portfolio without that, that is not a possibility. So it's always a collection is being published. Okay, let's confirm this primary statement. And so you get a notification that the portfolio will be locked. Um, the portfolio author cannot make any changes. And if you want to revert your decision, you have to ask the site administrator. And that again is being done via the more options button. Reset the statement where you can ask which of your two statements on this page you want to have reset. And then the um, locking is being removed. And I can also now publish my review comment. So that is all done. And if I now look at my portfolio as Paul, uh, Polly, then I can see that primary statement and also the reviewer comment. So that is huge new functionality. Um, where you can give a pre-made statement um, for for a portfolio that can just be ticked um, and or alternatively you can allow reviewer comments and as you can see here the primary statement where I said that the comment can have the reviewer's name has their name whereas the review comment does not display their name but just the date and the time. Um, at the moment, what is happening um, is that these portfolios will stay locked. So I can not delete it or I can also, once the um, statement has been confirmed and one of the requirements was that once the primary statement or any other statement has been confirmed that the portfolio is locked, I do not see the edit button. So it's really a long-term locking. However, what we are going to implement um, is a change in that so that um, you can decide when you create the template whether it shall be possible to have the portfolio unlocked um, either after a certain period of time or um, directly after the assessment has been done or not. At the moment, it will be locked for about six months. So we will need to wait for a minor point update, not the one that is still coming this week, but um, the, the next one to, to make some more comprehensive changes. Or if there are too many changes, um, then that might actually be in, in the new version. So in 21.10 is where we will add more flexibility. Um, so that was all for the portfolio completion changes, which included review blocks, um, improvements for copying portfolios, managing access, um, and also for deleting portfolios. 
So in the past, it was very difficult to actually delete a large portfolio because you needed to delete every single page from the collection. But now you can go to the collection and click the delete icon and it deletes the collection as well as all pages contained within. But of course, if you have artifacts like files or journals, they will still stay with you um, so that they can be repurposed, um, which is normal also for portfolio page deletion, but it is much faster because you just can get rid of all 17 or 20 pages there. Now, that was quite a lot of new functionality already. And so I'd still like to introduce one other huge feature, um, which is also very complex um, and allows you to see um, different, different sorts of working with um, portfolios and there in particular with submissions, is the submission management um, that came from University of Bremen. So I'm just submitting my portfolio to a group. And become my group administrator in my course group. And there are two new um, elements in my group, if I like. The archive. Um, has been contributed by Switch and ZHAW um, in this, uh, and allows you to look at all the portfolios that have been archived within that group. And you can also download all of the data in CSV format and then also get the path to the portfolio so that you can find it on the server. But the, the bigger feature that we will now take a look at more closely is the submissions feature or submissions management screen. Um, because imagine you have a lot of students um, and you might even have tutors or teaching assistants assigned to support you with the grading in that group, then your submission screen might look quite busy. So let me actually show you one of the busier screens. Um, here I'm just on a different site um, and there I have a number of portfolios, different names of people, um, different submission dates or similar dates, um, lots of different assessors. And I can also see the result and the status of the portfolios. And so normally what you get in Mahara before version 2104 is this screen where you can see submissions to this group. They are just listed with their submission date and the name, but not anything else. And so that submissions feature is really fantastic because there you can actually manage those submissions. Um, it allows you to assign assessors, so your group administrators, or um, group tutors, if you have tutors, you can select them and assign them to a portfolio. And you could then even filter to just display a particular assessor. So if I were a, an assessor in a very large group, then I could reduce that list and just show the portfolios that I'm responsible for. Uh, you can also see feedback if you've left feedback already on a portfolio. I just need to try to remember mine where I left feedback, probably as somebody else. Or task five, here it is. So you can see the feedback that you left on the first page of the portfolio um, in this case. And you can also work with the results, have different results either completed or needs revisiting, and you see the release status as well. And so these filters allow you to also filter by particular tasks because that feature does um, tie in very well with the group plans, which is also functionality developed by Universität Bremen. 
and therefore you can filter for that if you again want to just look at a smaller number of students and uh, you can also filter for if you if there's already commented or not commented feedback um, included so let's see that should allow us to see all the collections a bit faster where actually feedback has been left um, you can also filter for the result and the status and yes Gregor I think a lot of tutors um, will love this submission overview because it does really really help with when you have huge groups to manage and um, if I remember correctly uh, Carsten Wolf who's the professor um, behind the this development work at Universität Bremen has about 300 to 400 students in his course and so Alex Del Ponte uh, created this functionality so that they can really manage their, their huge student groups. Um, because it's a big table, what you can do is actually configure the columns so that you can decide um, whether you want to see um, lots of um, elements or not. So if you're not working with tasks, you could just um, not display those. Um, and therefore have more space for, for other results in your portfolio and really also focus on the information you need. You can export um, that table as PDF or also as CSV file, which then comes along with um, the information that you see in the table. So let's give that a quick go. Hopefully it will open up and so in this export you then see have the name the portfolio the date the feedback and the result and the status so it really mirrors the columns that um, you see on the screen and if you really want to go back to see all the results um, and you don't want to um, change all the individual quick filters you can just click the reset filters button and see all of the results again on the page. So that was another very big feature um, that has gotten into Mahara 2104 finally. Um, it did take us a little bit to get it in, so I'm really happy that we could include it now um, because there's a lot of different functionality in there um, that you can also explore and we'll do our best to also document that in the manual, of course. Um, so, for example, one nice uh, feature is also that once a portfolio has been released, you can click the portfolio title and it uh, gives you an export. Um, so it does also tie in very nicely with the other um, archive that we have, which I didn't turn on in this group. So I can show you on here um, where we see maybe just focus on the archive of the submissions and always get all the information displayed in the CSV um, file that we can download. Um, so that is really functionality taken from the site administration and made available for group administrators. So here, no matter whether you, whether they all, all that information is displayed on screen, you always get the full set um, exported in CSV so that you can then also see the file title, the file path where it is um, on the, on the server, um, and what the actual portfolio is called and when it was as, uh, submitted. Um, these are really the very big new features of Mahara 2104. So version April 2021. 20, uh, and um, if you would like to see more of these new features and also all the other fixes that we have made, 
you can follow the link. Um, just bear with me with the end plus screen here um, under this URL, where you see all the bug fixes and new features that have made it into Mahara 2104. And um, the manual is currently being updated um, because there were so many new features and our release um, month was quite short. Um, then I'm still a little bit behind with that, but will make the an updated manual available as soon as possible. Um, the manual itself is already there for 2104. It just doesn't contain all the new features just yet. But as usual, if you go to the manual, it uh, currently automatically again redirects you to version 2104. And so if you look at the index entry for new in Mahara 2104. A few of the features are already available here that you can um, see. So there are a number of these smaller ones that I haven't mentioned today um, because they may or may not be relevant for you so much. Um, but for example, you can decide whether you want to have comments on per default uh, when portfolios are created or not. But of course, portfolio authors can always still change that. Same thing also goes for deciding whether comments on notes should be on per default. You currently can already do that for files and make that decision. Um, we are not displaying the page description anymore on the page because we turned it into just the text field without formatting options in uh, 2110. And so now it really is just metadata, but we are using it, for example, here on that portfolio completion page so that it can be made visible or also um, under pages and collections if you go there. Um, also, a really small feature, but extremely nice, is that when you look at a group, um, so here our large group with lots of students in there, and um, you do keep the block for seeing submitted portfolios, then you always see members without submissions to the group here. And now we've um, been able through a patch from LearningWorks, I believe it was, um, to exclude administrators and tutors who of course will most likely not submit a portfolio from that list so that you really truly see how many students still need to submit their portfolio. Um, and then we've also made a number of changes that you can't immediately see on the front end, but that allow you um, more flexibility. So for example, you can decide whether you want to show the student ID in the display name um, when the name is being shown around the site. Um, that can be in particular of interest for organizations where those numbers are public and people can find each other very easily through that. Um, and then also one feature is to restrict with how many people or groups you can share a portfolio. So that is um, something that can currently be set in the uh, config file. Um, here in the setting on line, um, in my line 86, but of course in your config it would sit anywhere else, where you can say access list maximum, for example, two or three. And then if you go to a portfolio, on that particular site, just need to find the one where it is, and you create a personal portfolio. Should have one right here. Then you have a notification that you can only share with, in this case, three people or different groups of people and number three, and there is no more option to add more. So that is a feature which many of you might never ever really use because 
you do want often white times want to encourage sharing but might come in very handy when you run a Mahada platform in particular for certification purposes and you want to streamline and uh, prevent your portfolio authors to actually overshare. So that means that you can decide, okay, they can only share, say, with one person and you can even remove options from this menu um, via the code at the moment, not an admin setting, so that um, all that might be left is a search for a person and then you can share your portfolio only with one person um, in order to prevent um, superfluous support requests. And these were really all the exciting new features of Mahada 2104 that really fit into this hour today. Um, there are always a few more that um, are either just available on the um, in the code section and not necessarily explained um, in the Mahada manual, which of course looks more at features that you can see on the screen. And so please do feel free to explore all of them, give them a go and uh, let us know how you like them, how you get on with them and whether they um, help you also be more efficient in your portfolio work, either by creating portfolios, sharing templates with others or for your students um, or other learners of how they can deal with these usability improvements that we have made.